Hello, good morning, good afternoon, what's up everybody? This is your boy, Mr. Leon Hunt, better known as Ross Books One Time for the One Time Count Cool Count Quench. We're here in VIOC in action with another show bringing it to I am my life and respect. Oh gosh, man, like I, hey, look, look here, like I told you guys, man, July is the time of the year, especially going on to August because look here, it's already almost, well, it is the end of July. But a lot of sports championships and everything still going on. Like I told you guys, Panams is this month. Actually, Panams um, was yes. Panam opening ceremony was yesterday. We got a lot of stuff to bring to you guys. Um, the time difference is a little off, and the athletes is over there. We got a big group. We got forty something athletes going on down there representing the Virgin Islands from basketball. We got swimming. We got um, athletics. We have um, volleyball. We got boxing. We get man, it's a lot of stuff for us going on down there. Um, so we're gonna be for this for for the next show and the show after that, and then we're gonna get a little live thing down there with some man. It's a lot of stuff going on for you guys, and I be sure for sure to get that information for you guys because I, of course, where else you can get information from? Because I got the live and direct source with the people I'm down there. Woo! But this your boy. Um. I do want to apologize for one of those weeks I was over there in Italy and like I told you guys that I didn't have the connection like I thought I was going to have the connection so I could reach back with you guys so I could let you guys know about that trip but best believe that hey we got the information for you guys and it's all cool and then today I do have a special person online because me and this person go back from way far back a yard so um, I mean back to like 2008 Eight, I presume maybe 2008 2009 and this is when all right well some of you look a background and everything right so me and a special caller that's not here right now but a special caller uh let's just say that this this is this is how I learn a lot of the stuff of of when this is my upbringing with inside the federation um I, I, I would I was I was learned all the loops like I was taught everything and then gone to from there and then it just Man, it's, it's like, this is this show. You guys going to want this show because you guys want to say, books, how you know this stuff? How you get to do this stuff? Well, this person here teach me everything. So, so hey, bring it to y'all to the stage right now. Live and respect. We have Miss Golfin, Trudy Golfin, over here representing the Virgin Island Track and Field Federation. And, of course, UVI. Miss Golfin, what you say? Blessings. Okay. Blessings. Bless yes, uh, blessing, uh, blessing. What's up with golf and everything good or what? All is blessed, man. So good to hear your voice. And oh. I'm really excited. Yes. We have a lot to talk about. I want to hear about your trip in Italy in a while. But, Man. Um, thank you so much for having me on and for sharing. Yes, yes. Man, is I and the thing is, like I, I tell people on the show, like the show ain't just about the athletes, you know. It's about the athletes. Um, we got the administration. It's like they say one hand to wash another hand to walk together, and then we put on the show because that's all the tingle for the tingle. You know what I mean? A lot of a lot of thinking and logistics that go into a lot of these games and plans that a lot of people do not understand, you know. And and today I do want you to speak about some of those things because. I mean, people really just don't understand like how much time and effort and, and going back and forth with, at least in your role, going back and forth with the athletes to try to get a solidified plan down to make the show nice and smooth. Right or wrong? You're so right. Um, and it's the, the operative word in all of this is teamwork. Um, it's where every part comes into play. It's more like your body, your head, foot, hands, and um, so the athletes, coaches, administrators, everyone has a key role that we play to make it happen. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, our job is to ensure that the athlete gets to the starting line. Yes. And that the, yeah, that's, that's our main job. Our main job is to ensure that we pull out all stops to ensure that all athletes get to their location, to their destination to compete, mm -hmm. and they get to that starting line so that the Virgin Islands can be in just as equal a playing field as any other country. So we have to do what we have to do. And as, as team leader, mm -hmm. my job, it's, it's critical, it's crucial. And, and I'll, I'll give you even examples. 
I can recall one time you and I were. Was it um, Maya Guaz? What do we call? Woo! Yeah, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. My let me see. My Guaz. That was two thousand ten and two thousand nine, perhaps. Yes. Okay. And one of our athletes had taken a flight and had got into, I think, was it Miami or somewhere? Mm -hmm. And when they got there to come into Puerto Rico, um, the luggage wasn't there. <laughs> so we had always, asked, yeah, we had always told our athletes, to, if nothing else, check your competition gear to walk with it on you. Do not check it on. Yes. And for some for some reason, one of our athletes' um, gears was were checked on in their checked on luggage. And so when they got into Puerto Rico to get into Mayaguez, you know, the luggage hadn't arrived. That was at around midnight, mm -hmm. one o'clock. Mm -hmm. And the athlete was panicking. Mm -hmm. And my job was to ensure that the athlete gets to the venue, regardless of what, where the luggage was. My job was to locate that luggage, that piece of luggage with his competition gears, and get it to him before he starts his race. And so there he, he was in a panic, and I said to him, you know what you need to do? You need to get onto that flight, get over here in one piece, and let me worry about what gets to you. And, you know, frantically that night, um, and I think you were even involved in it, and we had Coach Golfin, um, Charles mm -hmm. Golfin, who Correct. served as um, head coach at the time. Um, we were up all night just to ensure that we were able to track his flight and to ensure that his competition gear, his, his, um, his running shoes, his sprint shoes, his uniform, everything would have gotten to us in Mayaguez in time for the athlete to compete. But the important thing was to get the athlete into the village, get him comfortable, get him seated, get him well rested, mm -hmm. get him um, to his training um, practices and to the starting line. So just to give an example as to the roles that we have to play to ensure that we have success in getting our athletes to the starting line and not only to get them at the starting line but to ensure that they are in the most comfortable position that we can afford so that they can compete in a most um in the in the best frame of mind correct you know we can't put any distractions around the athletes we can't afford to have anything that's going to deter them from the job that they come to do mm -hmm. it, it's so true because it's funny that's the first thing you come up with because on my recent trip when we went over to italy my swimmer, as you guys may know, Webster Bazo, he was on the show a couple months ago. Webster, well, guess what? His luggage got lost. His luggage got lost from, I think they left, uh, uh, let me see if I'm correct. They left Charlotte to Rome and they went into Naples. So guess what? They, the luggage from Charlotte did not make it into Naples until four days afterwards, which is, that's a long time. A whole big suitcase, you know. And we went to the airport like maybe three times on the first, the first day. They just didn't know where it was at. The second day, oh, yeah, yeah, it's coming, it's coming. I'm going to say it should be here. The third day, we didn't realize it was still in America. And then the fourth day, which we was already ahead six hours a time, it was like, well, the luggage is coming. It's in Rome. It'll be here by the morning. So actually, the fifth day, he had to wait five days for him to get his luggage. And that was like crazy. And just as you said... I mean, he is a swimmer. I don't know why he's checking our luggage anyway, but <laughs> he was a swimmer, and he had he had a he had enough clothes with him to go to the couple of days because all he was in and out of the pool. But granted, it was five days and had to go to the airport and make sure that everything was there. And I mean, you know how everything is when you travel and you and you don't travel with your luggage, so you have to go through customs and everything else too. And it was like, well, why isn't the person here? without the luggage and i was like man look you're here for the games i'm over i'm i was the head of the delegation for this particular trip and we're going through everything and the, and my my athlete was panicking of course because he didn't have his luggage and i was like look everything's gonna be good look your competition is still a whole nother day away it's gonna be cool and nice and easy and we got him he, we got his temperature down and he was cool and then he went out there the luggage came in he was a happy camper and he went out there and performed great you know, so and, and, and that's the important thing because you know this is this is the the life of an athlete. You know, you spend all season training for your sport, training for your competition. You're there. You know, you between doing the different um, meets that you have to do to qualify for the major events, mm -hmm. for the major competitions. And after you have gone through all of the stress of training, um, competing. 
your your dream your goal is to is to get into a position to present your country and yourself and so this is this is everything everything banks on this you know whatever your season is because each sport has a different season whatever you do with whatever your season is and so and, and it goes up in in, in in depends on your sport in in less than 10 seconds That's... in less than 10 seconds in less than 30 seconds depends on what event you do and the distance mm-hmm. of the event so for a 100 meter runner i mean in less than 10 seconds maybe you know there the, everything that you have worked for up to that point it goes into that one 10 seconds or less because you know how the times are these days correct correct you know? correct and so when you put everything on the line and you show up for your final act and you're not uniformed for your final act you'd have just blown the whole thing and so mm-hmm. for us as administrators team leaders coaches um and so forth our job is to make sure that we put all the pieces in place to ensure that our athletes are taken care of um and and the thing is as you as you just did in italy there are situations where mm-hmm. you have to develop you have to double up as a coach sometimes you have to double up you as and Leon, you have had the experience. Many times you have, you have gone into my in my position as a team leader. Yes, so yes. Double, I re- under- you want me to tell you one? I think my first position as team leader was 2013 World Relays when in Bahamas the first World Relays, and yes. at the time this was during the springtime, so it was April, and it was mm-hmm. a busy time for school for you. Our national yes. coaches was all busy as well. And we had a team of six people alternates. We was running the four by two. But it needed a team leader there. It was like, look, we need somebody to get there and get the paperwork right on there and, and, and the payment and everything. And I remember going in there, it was like, okay, so as an athlete, you just have to show up, get your bib. Actually, you just get your bib with your pins. You go out there and you run, right? But on the yeah. other side of thing, you have to know where these technical meetings are. If this person time is correctly, is everybody's everybody got the same color uniforms in a relay? Um, are you in the right places? Is, is the payments is correct? Um, do everybody names like the whole night? And I'm like, look, I came out here to perform too. Like you know what I mean? But I was like, look, it's challenging, but I could do this here. And as an athlete. Sometimes you don't want to put on those extra pressure on you, but it had to be done because if if nobody was there, I had to do it. We had to run. Like, we had to be there. We had to represent, and the show must go on, and I wasn't going to let that hold us down. And we did great. We did great at World Relays, and we actually had did. We broke the record for the 4x2 um, at that same competition, which was a brand new track, too, as well. So... That was an awesome experience to be on to do two roles, which is team leader and athlete at one of the biggest competition places ac- across the world and to compete against the greatest. And I was like, man, like that was something to remember. And that was my first meet, which is, I said, 2013, World Relays, Bahamas. That was it. So that was, and I learned from you, from all your head, from all of your headaches. <laughs> well, let me tell you that, you know, and we're forever grateful to you for that. And not only, you know, I'll have to take the opportunity to say thank you as a person and as an athlete and for the role that you're now playing as it relates to continuing track and field in the Virgin Islands. You know, I really have to commend you because, you know, from the moment we met uh, many years ago, many, many moons ago, to now you have... Uh, you have had a vested interest. I've seen him make the sacrifices. And I know going to Bahamas for the rural relays was a big sacrifice for you. Because I think that was the first rural relays that we had. That was and the and very was first, first one. That was the first um, set of games. And for you to have gone in, you know, in uncharted waters with all the challenges. And, you know. Yeah, because be- this, what, what was interesting about that meet too was, well, for one, we we didn't have no coach, and quote unquote, we didn't have a team leader. We had athletes, right? Uh-huh. Although we had mature athletes, you still was there with athletes, and it was like, okay, well, who is? I ain't gonna say who's the boss, but who or who in charge? But who's the one that said, okay, well, all right, well, we had a team captain, cool. So great, our team captain. So not and not two. So I didn't want to interfere with like you know, I had team captain. They want to do like okay, well, you gotta do this. I was like, no. 
do we all here we all here to do a particular um task which is running the four by two uh, yes we are here but we gotta keep our heads on straight we gotta make sure we team and coach each other out here like we all in this together and i mean it was one of the times where we actually did a really good job of bonding with each other as being on the senior team because as you know most of our senior athletes they don't live home they live away and during that time I 2013 everybody was literally just graduating college or still in college so the only time we got to be with each other and practice and train was at those particular meets you know um so that was challenging and it touched on a very important point um the dynamics of the team mm -hmm. and um I, I, I bet I wonder if words, you know probably wouldn't want to say challenges but let us say the different dynamics that come into play for team leaders and for teams and for all the other players in the whole team, in the whole big picture. Because as you said, many of our athletes in the Virgin Islands are away. Yes. And you're on different campuses. Ex and so even for as a team leader, when we when we have to coordinate, you know, to make sure that everybody, you know, because there was a time when I was booking tickets for the team. Oh, that's the worst part. <laughs> Tickets for the team. Like yeah, that's what what I wait. We gonna we go, on the second segment. We gonna go into that one there because I think that's a rough one that people don't understand. So let's come back to uh, that point there. We are gonna go in that one in the second segment. I, I don't know if uniform is gonna be in the second segment. We could go uniform now. Segment. No, we good. We could talk about uniforms here. Uniforms, even as simple as ensuring that there's the proper size of the your our flag. Mm -hmm. uh, of the, the, the VI plug is the same style that is, you know, um, that is quali that qualifies for for you to compete, you know. But thankfully, we were, we were sponsored by Mizuno, you know, so they had their thing on Pat, on Pat. They had their thing locked, everything yeah. were within um, all the guidelines. Correct. We're talking about um, at least being sure healthy and fine, and then when they come to the competition, and, you know. Just by walking wrongly <laughs> for, for a bit of want of words, somebody can twist an ankle. Somebody yeah, yeah. Shout, shout, shout out to um to Leslie Murray for always rolling his ankle just walking straight. <laughs> <laughs> this dude always twists like he just can't walk in a straight line or nothing. Like if he walk, <laughs> like he he always injure himself. Just by walking at all the big meets, he don't oh. never get injured any the whole year, and at the big meets he just walk and get injured. Like I think out of out of all of his thirty something international meets, at least twenty of them, he rolled his ankle by just walking. You feel that you feel that Leslie doesn't even hear his interview. Leslie, I have nothing to do with this, right? Well, I gonna let him know. I gonna shoot it to him directly. <laughs> <laughs> But, but talking about that, and, and, and the fact that you even touched on that, Leon, is the fact that we, our team has been so dynamic. And I really have to say thanks to all of you, including you, because you were pretty much one of the main, you were pretty much a glue that really held us together. Because as I said before, you know, we're all in different parts of the world, um, and mostly in the States for you guys. And then for us, so, sometimes we, we meet in the athlete for the first time when we end up at the competition like in person yeah 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 that's true for us to come together from different parts and still have a vibe we still had a a team mm -hmm. we still had and that, that made a big, big difference because if there's any form of let us say um difference mm -hmm. that doesn't go that doesn't go over well it can disrupt the team and as a team leader our job is to look out for anything at all that mm -hmm. can cause a disruption to the team and ensure that that is quashed as quickly as possible because when we get there we cannot afford to have anything at all that will take away from the main goal of getting the athletes to the starting line give them a fair chance as anyone else to compete and for them to compete well and so even for a team leader we have to think ahead of time we have to be there ahead of time ensure the accommodations are fine even as sim simple as the temperature in the room I mean, I go with athletes and I have to, and I have to ask, are you, do you like to sleep in light? Do you want to, what's how temperature, how much, yep. how cold do you want the room to be? How hot mm -hmm. do you want the room to be? So, sometimes I share with an athlete, sometimes I share in the same room as an athlete. And I do not like to sleep in the cold. And I've had, I've slept with athletes who let the room cold, 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 like for that reason. <laughs> I have to work with my blanket and hoodie because 
it's not about me, it's about ensuring yeah. that the athlete is comfortable. So right, I'm right. Two, three blankets because I know this athlete doesn't like a hot room or a warm room. The person wants you to be so cold. So, you know, I think for the like a, like a local Eskimo, just to ensure that the athlete gets the temperature that he or she wants to and for, for, for their for them to function well. Um, water, ensure that the athlete gets water. Yeah. Ensure they get this thing. And, and sometimes, as I said, a person may say, isn't that the coach? Isn't that the job of the coach? But sometimes it depends on how many athletes we have on a competition and how many um, coaches we have. As team leader, I still have to even double up. And thankfully, I'm also a coach. So that's, that, helps, that's why it's tell- <laughs> yeah. Hey, is, is one thing you carry a lot. Let me tell you, you got a lot of hats, you know. And it's a good thing to be experienced in some of those because, I mean, you're dealing with some divas, you know, some, deal- some divas and kings over here. And these people that want the best of the best and this and this and you know the type of organization they confronted to be like, wait, who this is? You know what I mean? Like, like, oh, matter of fact, wait, okay, no, hey, Carlos, we're gonna come right back real quick. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll come right back. We we'll get right into the middle of exactly how it is to deal with these preppy people on preppy athletes, or how is it, or how should I say, a demanding athletes. And, and, and coaches and, and team leaders and administration. We'll get about that when we come back in a second. Right back in to VIOC in action. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to VIOC in action. We're live and in here with Mrs. Trudy Golfin representing for the Virgin Island Track and Field Federation. Uh, the best of the best team leader that I have ever known. And just before we left for the break, we are just talking about how really it is to, 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 to attend to the needs of our athletes, administration, and coaches. And um, before we got off, Trudy was just telling us about everything. So Trudy, please continue, because this is very good information. Yes, as I was saying, one of the key key things for us as team leaders is to ensure that we do what we have to do to ensure that the athlete is in the best frame of mind to compete. And that includes even how they sleep, where they sleep, what they eat, what they need to drink. You know, different athletes have different demands. There are some athletes who are very easy, um, mm-hmm. and there are some athletes who just demand a lot more. Right. But my job as team leader is to ensure that I learn my athletes as much as possible. So let this me ask you. They can... So, so where, what was, which, not the athlete, but not saying the name of the athlete, if you don't want to, but which athlete or which situation from an athlete was your most challenging um, one so far? Okay, I think one of the most challenging um, situations I've dealt with with our athletes is, as I said to you before, when one, one of the athletes, um, Love It, was, was, um, did not arrive on time with the athlete. And you see, the, the funny thing with that is that when it comes to gears and uniforms, it's best for the athlete to get their uniforms ahead of time yes. and the shoes that they're going to compete in because it gives them a chance to break the shoes in. Mm-hmm. And there's a guarantee that if an athlete um, does have the proper uniform at the event, this athlete cannot compete. So that was, to me, the most challenging situation I've had. Mm-hmm. And having to get the athletes there to the competition, not even, not even quite sure how I'm going to get the gears to the athlete, but just to ensure that the athlete gets into the village with us and to give the athlete the confidence and trust that we'll do everything that we're going to be able to do to get the uniform to him for, for him or her to compete. Mm-hmm. And so that was the first experience I had with that was an eye-opener. I mean, I told you, I could not, I did not sleep that night. Right, but right. Because was, was there and he was, I was on one phone with, with the airline, he was on the other phone with the airline. And that's where teamwork also comes in because sometimes depends on the idea that you're dealing with, you may have to pull other people into the situation to ensure that everything is there. Mm-hmm. And so there is I could tell you that the plan the flight there was gonna be another flight into Mayaguez. I couldn't tell you I don't I didn't know if American Airlines or whatever airlines had back to back flights. So it could be that the, no flight could have come in for that day or the next day. That's true, so that's we, true. Because that's not a big airline, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean um uh, regional so, airport, sorry. Mm-hmm. So anything, you know how Mayaguez is, you have to come into San Juan and then get into Mayaguez, you know? Oh, yeah. So that was a kind of out of the way situation. 
And then even the situation of at his word in exams. I mean, Leon, you what are they? Yeah, I I remember that. Um, one of the years. Um, let me see. That was this. That's the same year. Um, when Maya was yeah, when we yeah. had the camp. Um, I was still in school. I did summer school that year. Um, took extra classes during the summer. And I remember still having to take exams. So training in the summer and being at a different school because you got to take your, 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 your exams at a, at a, at a, um, a school, accredited school, so they could make sure you don't cheat, <laughs> right? So although my class is online, my test had to be online at a, a school with a monitor right there. And during those six weeks or whatever amount of weeks it was, um, that was kind of like, well, after training, like, I can't train with you guys now because actually I either have, um, I got to go up to the school and take a test or I didn't class. Like, I, I just can't, I need to study right now. I mean, running is important. And it's, it's this time, as you said, you're a student first and then you're an athlete. All of the summertime, but I'm still in school. And, you know, your school come first or is, hey, you ain't gonna have that scholarship for next semester, you know? So I remember do training and being um, in school at the same time in the summer, and that was challenging. But it's doable because I did it, and I it was I'm taking a history class. I remember, and uh, yeah. it was it was cool. It, it was it was it gave me some good experience. So I could talk about it today, and I know um, if it was up to me again, I, I I mean I honestly I don't think that it was something I couldn't do. I just think if you're the individual that you could study in the summer and be able to still perform, do it. If you can't do both, just choose one and don't do the other one, you know?